Pleasure to have you again. Sure. I just want to show you something, if uh, you don't mind, before we get things uh, going. Remember this? Oh uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah, that was a, that was a fun trip. All right, the I Philippines. Enjoy Manila when I go. That's great. We just showed him a picture of the uh, Kevin Durant Manila tour. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I want to start with that. What are your like fond memories about that visit in the Philippines? Uh, just the people. They were so excited to see us and um, they supported us so much. And it's very rare to get an NBA player to come mm -hmm. um, hang out with them for a couple of days. So I had, a, I had a lot of fun. That was my third time in Manila. So right. Um, you know, I felt like uh, those people starting to get more used, getting used to me a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, um, get a feel for me a little bit. So it was fun. I enjoyed myself. Now that was the third time you're in Manila, but that was the first time that it was all about you. Yeah. It was just you. And you know, when we talk about the main night, when when I hosted you that main night, you know, usually. Obviously, fans pack an arena because there are two great teams there, or there's one big team. But it was all about you, and they, they packed the arena. When you think about that, I mean, all the things that you've done and all the arenas that you've been yeah. to, does that still blow your mind? It does. It does. I mean, like you said, we usually play two teams. It's a lot of people that you can focus on. Right. You come to see multitude of guys when you watch a basketball game, but um, to know that that many people supported me all on another side of the world right. just means a lot to me. You know, I come from a small town, and I didn't think my name could be ringing all across the world like this, but I'm glad it is. I'm glad people were really inspired by my game and mm -hmm. enjoy my game, and mm -hmm. I just try to do my best to represent them every time I step on the floor. The FIBA World Cup uh, will happen in Manila in August, and one of the many teams that uh, I've already committed to go is Team USA. Is that something on your mind? What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, you know? it's, on, it's on my mind. I thought about it, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Not yet? Sure mm -hmm. right now. Great. Um, I definitely want to get through this season. And I love my Team USA family, and as much as I can try to go out there and play, I will, but it's got to work out for me as well. You know, I'm getting up there in the league, so I want to, you know, these summers are important to me, so, um, but I, it's something I'll think about for sure. Yeah, for sure. All right, well, that's good enough for us right now <laughs> to hang on to at the very least. All right, you, you've had a spectacular career. You've experienced everything already. Um, even when it comes to transferring and trading, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think you've experienced you know, transferring before the All-Star, yeah. then after the All-Star, you're going to be with a different team that has a chance to win to win a chip. Yeah. Does that feel weird at all? Yeah. Because usually it's the off-season yeah. or prior to the season. Yeah, it definitely does. I mean, I never expected to be traded before, and I never thought I would go through, yeah. you know, a trade. I've been through 16 trade deadlines. I never thought I'd be a part of one. So uh, it was a unique experience. It was something I can always, you know, talk about and add to the, you know, the, the, the value of experiences I had since mm. I've been into the league. I, I feel like I've experienced it all, from winning yeah. championships to, you know, being an MVP, being traded, being signed as a free agent. So I feel like I've done everything in the right. NBA so far. And this was definitely a new experience for me. And, um, the transition, the off the court stuff is what people don't realize that's difficult. Mm. Getting up and changing your home base in a matter of days. Yeah. And, you know, so it was, uh, that's the tough part, but we got a lot of resources to do so, so right. we'll figure it out. And, Glad Phoenix now. Yeah, it was a bit weird now that I thought about like the the mid-season yeah. transfer. Um, speaking of the the, the the team you left, I, we were watching the the introductory press conference with uh, Phoenix, and one of the things that struck me there in that that moment was you did get a bit emotional talking about uh, your departure. Yeah. Was there a particular reason why? Yeah, I mean, I spent some. I like to reflect on my time and, and really um, tr tr try to get a, a true understanding of what it means, mm -hmm. you know, what I just did. Um, you know, so coming off a of Kelly's injury, which was the most significant thing that happened to me in my mm -hmm. basketball life, um, and if for them to be there and it guide me through that as I was coming, as I was recovering, I thought that was a huge part of my career. Right, you know, right, right. We went through COVID and, and mm -hmm. the bubble. And it's so, it's so much stuff that was we had to fight through as an organization and me as a player, us as a lead. Mm. Um, so I thought those two years, three years there was significant for me because there's a lot of mental uh, hurdles I had to jump over. Mm. Uh, and, and a lot of the staff in Brooklyn was there to catch me a lot of times. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it felt it felt like I was building a, um, a nice base there, a nice mm. family there, but I felt like I had to do what I had to do in order for, in order for me to put myself in position mm -hmm. to, uh, to be on a solid team so, mm -hmm. uh, moving forward. So um, 
it worked out for the best, I think. All right. Um, the thing about that, one of the things that I, I got from the, the press conference other than that one is also the fact that you said one of the reasons why it didn't work out is you just didn't play together. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, enough time. Now here, you only have the second half of the season to work with, with a brand new team, guys that you know, obviously a great coach, great organization. Realistically, you think there's enough time to go for a chip for this one? And why? When why? Yeah, I mean, every every day you want to compete for that. You know, I feel like every day we want to set a high standard. And I think mm. that's the beauty of playing with the Suns and playing for Coach Monty is that regardless of what your record is, regardless of what you did last night, you mm. still held to that high championship level standard. And I think if we continue to consistently do that every day, we put ourselves in a position to be mm. successful. So I don't like to predict championships or talk about them like that because it's hard to do and, and life is very unpredictable. But mm. uh, I, I, I like to just. You know, you know, put ourselves in a position by the work that we put in every day just to give ourselves a chance. That's how I look at it. All right. Do you have any prior connection with anybody from the organization, players, maybe and a connection that the media has not seen, people don't see maybe some runs in, yeah. in the off season, like, yeah. and who, if ever? I mean, I've just got a lot of connections with the Suns. Monty obviously kept coaching me in OKC. I played with Damian Lee in uh, Golden State. Mm -hmm. uh, I played with Cameron Payne in OKC. Mm -hmm. Been on Olympic teams with CP and Book. Uh, it's a couple uh, uh, guys on mommy staff that were coaches in OKC with me, Mark Bryan, Steve Skiles. We like we got. There's it's a few ties there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the NBA is one big family. We all move around. Right. Years, like, so I work with a few guys in a couple spots, and so it's good to have some familiar faces. There are three things that I'm quite sure that I know about you, just watching you and having spent time with you. Uh, first, you want a ball. It's a pure love of yours. You love the grind the grind that is behind closed doors most especially and you love that work and you want to win that those are the three things and i know you can't w wait to get back on the court is there a timetable for you already when it comes to that uh it's, it's winding now hopefully next week or two oh, um, wow okay no exact date right you know, i'm just just trying to take the day at a time right. I mean, this is a um, one of those injuries you can't rush so um hopefully in a couple of weeks man. I, I i wish i could tell you a date but i, I really don't know right now you look like you're itching to, yeah, <laughs> to get back in there right I, am. I, am. I mean i miss the game i miss the routine i miss it's a different routine when you're rehabbing and when you're playing of course. you know so I'd rather be playing right, the, uh, of course. the team instead of being isolated and rehabbing. Right. So uh, I miss I miss the routine, the grind, and, and you know, look forward to getting back to it. That's what I see during your interviews, like yeah. that that passion and that itch to just get out there yeah. and, and yeah. be be out yeah. there. Anything you want to say to our Filipino fans? Uh, yeah. If you see them in, in August, great. If not, is there any yeah. message you want to? Everybody in the Philippines, I love you so much. Thank you for all the support. You've been supporting me since day one. Regardless of where I play, where I go, you've been there. So hopefully I see you guys soon. I won't promise anything yeah. for this summer, but I, I see you guys in, in the near future. KD, ladies and gentlemen, let's wish him luck. And hopefully when he gets back, stays healthy for that championship run. We appreciate your time, man. Thank you, brother. We love you.